What page are we on this one? We're on page 13 here, where we're going to start. Right at the bottom, right after the AP poll, basketball poll. All right. Again, this is us. No, it's not us. We've got change. It's not us. It's find us. Here we are. So you guys know that the student workbook is a minor grade, taking notes, and it's going to be graded. Again, you should be done with the problems on page 18 through 20. Um, they have to do with sequential pairwise, rank method, and condorcet's method. Those, those are things we've covered. Um, then after today, you'll be able to look at the problems uh, on board account, which is on page 21, and on uh, not plurality. Plurality is tomorrow. Plurality and runoff is tomorrow. The hair system. We're going to talk about board account and hair system today. There's my, there's my latest right there. So, we'll have a quiz on Friday, test next Thursday, and then we have a cumulative test the final week. That's it. That's it. I might. Have a, we might talk about Eros impossibility theorem tomorrow, and then we're just going to have a pool voting practice on Thursday. That's the plan. That's the plan. So, so this is the bottom of page 13. This is where I stopped. This is where I ended our instruction time. So the missing word today we're going to talk about is board account. The board account is a special ranking method. Okay, we talked about board ranking methods. That was when, like, you get 10 points, for example, for first place, five points for second place, uh, zero points for third place. It, it can be anything. I kind of alluded to board account. Board account strictly goes by the equation if you have n candidates. If you have n candidates, the number of points that are awarded to the first place finishers is n minus one. Okay, so let's say you have four candidates, right? You have you have a first place. You have a you have a second place in your in your preference ballot. You have a third place. You have a fourth place. So there's four candidates that are competing, right? So if n, if n is four, you plug this in to this little equation and you get four minus one. So this will tell you how many points the first place finisher gets. And so they would get three points. So first place would be three. And with board account, they they decrease by one every time. So if first place gets three points, second place gets two points, third place gets one point, so that's fourth place did nothing. That's last place. If there's four candidates and you finish fourth, guys, nice, that's last place. Oh, I only finished fourth. Um, I'm sorry. That was that was the last. That was you didn't beat anybody. Okay, everybody beat you. So you're not going to get any points for that. So we do just like rank method. This is a special ranking method system. We we add up all these totals. We count how many first place finishes that candidate gets, and then we multiply how many first place finishes by the points that are awarded for first place. In this case, it's three points. <clears throat> and then we add up all those tallies of each of the candidates. But this is unique, and as their total score is called the Borda score. So Borda count has what's called a Borda score. And that's what the tally, all the points added up together is. Okay. If you wanted to, Stephanie, if you want to be over there and not have to, I, I feel like I'm distracted. You know, it's, your, it's your choice. Oh, no, it's okay. All right. So uh, that's where we're going to start. Let's do this. Let's look at an example. Let's look at an example. So here, here are my here are my candidates A, B, C, and D. And this is a preference ballot or preference table 
And these are individual preference ballots. So each one of these columns is one vote. Some of you guys were struggling with that before. This is one vote. This is not multiple voters, okay? This is a table that displays the, the preference of, of five individual voters. And so first place, there's four candidates. So first place is three points. Second place is two points, just like the example I listed. So I'm just going to count how many first place votes each candidate gets. So I'm going to start right here. Well, A has got one first place vote. One times three, well, they get three points under their name. I go to the next one. Well, candidate D has one first place vote by voter two, but also has a first place vote for voter five. So two first place votes for candidate D. So two times three is six points. So I put that score underneath their name. And now I go to the next one, voter B. I mean, candidate B got voter, got one first place finish from voter three. So I put three points in their column. And this is just like what we did rank method. And voter C has another three points. And I've awarded all the first place finishes and points for for the first row. So now I go to second place, and each second place finish is worth two points. And B's got one, two, three second place finishes. So three times two is going to be six. And six to B's total. And now A has two second place finishes. So two times two points is four for candidate A. And now third place finishes, well, D only got one third place finish. And each third place finish is just one point. So I'm just gonna put one there. C has one, two, three third place finishes. So three times one is three. And then we have candidate A has one third place finish. So we got one point to go under A. So now I add all these up. And when I add these up, this is called the border score. This is called the board of score. And the candidate with the most points in their board of score is going to be a winner. So I add these up and I get A is uh, eight. Can I enter? It's eight. This is nine. This is six. This is seven. So who's got the most votes? Who's got the most points? Candidate B does. So candidate B is our winner. So B wins. So know that uh, this system works really well. And in fact, there's a visual way you can count boxes to do this. Why well, I, I, this is kind of timely. It takes me some time to do this. They add up all these columns and rows and figure out their point systems and add these up. Well, there's a visual way to quickly calculate a candidate's board of score. And it's simply counting going to sound crazy. All the boxes below that candidate in every column. Okay, this really works. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say A. A got eight points as their border score, right? Well, let's look at candidate A. And candidate A is in green here. Well, how many boxes are there below? How many places? How many boxes are there below candidate A in the first column? Well, there's one, two, three. In the second column, there's one, two. In the third column, there's also two. Let me get rid of this. In the fourth column, there's one. And in the fifth column, well, there's not, there's nobody below candidate A. Now add up those box numbers. Three plus two plus two plus one plus zero equals eight. 
crazy. It works for all the candidates. So you can visually do this. I'll do it with candidate B. I'll do it with candidate B. So candidate B is in purple, and candidate B has two boxes below him here, has zero boxes here, has three boxes below him here, has two boxes below him here, and two boxes below him here. I add all these numbers up, what do I get? So I, I, I get nine. That's candidate B's for the score. Isn't that crazy? Now this only works when we have individual voter voters in these preference ballots. This does not work when we have multiple votes in these columns. You've seen them both ways. This only works with the individual votes that are set up like this. Because you can do that really fast. You don't have to go across first place finishes, count all the first place finishes, multiply by how many points. It's really quick visually. Nice, nice little quick shortcut you guys can use. And it works for all the candidates. So just know now, I, I do have some bad news. And that's uh, the board account has a, has a pretty important flaw. And the flaw is, is a property that's called the independence of irrelevant alternatives. And what that means is that when we say irrelevant alternatives, we're talking about elections that, that candidates lose. And so they didn't win the candidates, but they didn't win the they didn't win the election. But if you have at least one voter that reverses the order in which they or they, they had voted and 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 what, what happens is it changes the outcome of the election. I'm going to show you an example here. So, and we're going to call this ILA. And it stands for Independence of Irrelevant Alternatives. Let me show you that example. Okay. I'm going to give it to you straight. So, we got a board of count here, and I'm just going to count boxes. All right. So, I'm going to count boxes here. So A has two here, two here, two here, and zero, zero. So what's A's for us for? Well, six. Let's look at B's for 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 score. She's got one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and then you add those up. B has a board of score of five. Okay, now we got to go to C. Well, C has zero here. There's nobody below him. There's no boxes below him here. But there's two boxes here and two boxes here. So candidate C has a board of score of four. Now, you guys can check it the other way if you like, but, but this is right. And so these are the candidates' board of score. And the candidate with the most points in their board of scores are winners right now. A wins this election. All right, so this, this is what the problem with board of score is. So if we have at least two voters that change their positioning on candidates who didn't win the election, it should be irrelevant, right? It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't, it shouldn't change the outcome of the election. But this is what we're going to do. Instead of having this ordered voter for voting for candidate C, first and, and candidate B second, we're going to switch this. We're going to switch from B from C to B to B to C. And same thing with voter five. Both those are going to change. So uh, and that's that's the example you're going to put down here. Everything else is the same. The only thing I change is, is the order of these last two votes. Okay. So now let's do the border score again. And I'm just going to count boxes this time. And so B has got one there, one there, one there. We've got two there, got two there. When I add those up, that's three, that's seven. So B has a board of score of seven. Let's look at A. A has two there, two there, two there. And this is, these are all zeros. And 
and I add these up, A, a board of score of six. And C, well, C has got zero here, zero there, and there's one plus one. And when I add all these up, well, C, candidate C has a board of score of two. Okay, so all I did was switch two votes. Now, what happened? Who won the election? B. B did. B did with a board of score of seven. You guys remember when we started this? Um, way back, this unit, we talked about evaluating voting systems three different ways. We asked three questions. Is it fair to voters? Second question, what, is, it, is it fair to candidates? Does it treat candidates equally? And then the third question is, 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 is it monotone? Okay. Well, switching B and C on the vote should not mean anything. If it doesn't mean anything, it, it, it is monotone. Okay. It shouldn't matter. And the problem is, is that with board account, it, it does matter. It changes the outcome of that election. So you remember we talked about disingenuous votes, how we can manipulate voting systems. Well, this we can do that with board account. And the fact, the fact that B is now the winner, and, and A is now a loser, is not independent of where candidate B and C finish this race. It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. So therefore irrelevant make a difference. The ones of losing candidates are going to make a difference if something changes. And the irrelevant the independence of irrelevant alternatives, the ILA is not met. Independence of irrelevant alternatives is not met. I don't know why they want to abbreviate it ILA. I would thought they would do it like II. IIA. But that's how that's the way it is in our content. So crazy, huh? All right, let's look at this other system. You're gonna like this other system. I think it's kind of cool. So that's board account. That is board account. Let's look at this next system is called voting methods called the hair system. H A R E. And what happens with the hair system is that you uh, you delete or eliminate. Candidate with the least votes, right? The least with, with the fewest first place votes. So we're counting first place votes. And those votes are redistributed to the next person in line. And you repeat this, you repeat this until you have an ultimate winner. Okay, so when you get down to two candidates. And you can determine a winner, a, a quick and dirty winner, you're done. You're done. Um, in some cases, you may reach a point where all the remaining candidates have the same number of votes. And in that case, you, you're going to declare a tie. All right. If you repeat this and, and two can, the two candidates you're left with end up having the same amount of votes, that's a tie. You can't, you can't get rid of it. Can't get around it. It's also known, the system is also known as a single transferable vote system. It was created in 1861 by a guy named Thomas Hare, hence why we call it the Hare system. It's a, it is a voting system used to elect public officials in, in Australia, in Malta, and in Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. So it's it's used, it's used in the in, in around the world. Let's look at this. So we, we go by number of votes here. These aren't independent preference valves. These, these are 
there's five people that voted this way. There's four people that voted this way. Three people that voted this way, and and one person voted like this. And we're only going to count the people in first. Those those are the, that's how we count. So we have candidate A, we have candidate B, and we have candidate C. All right. So A got five votes. You got five votes there. And C got four votes. And B got three votes. And look at oh, he got another vote here. So this is their total. So six, three, four. So you don't declare a winner. I don't say that A won. They got the most votes. But what you do is you eliminate the candidate with the least votes. B got the least votes. So you know what? They're gone. They have been eliminated. And then you go to your preference schedule. And every place you see a candidate B, you scratch him off. And so I know what you're asking. Who do those three votes go to? Well, the next candidate that's in that column. And the next candidate in that column is, is candidate C. So candidate C gets awarded those three votes. And suddenly the, the scales are tipped. You add those three candidates, those three votes from candidate B's column, candidate C ends up being a winner. Okay. You continue this until there's a, a winner. So we have something that we talked about. It's called the CWC. This is the Condorcet winning. And it's, it's, it's this right here. Does the hair system meet the CWC? And it's asked, are you going to get the same winner using the Condorcet method? Are you going to get the same outcome using the Condorcet method? It's just, it's just that test. This Condorcet method is pretty popular. And again, Condorcet is that one one on one competition right this is one we won until there's an ultimate champion so i'm going to just see we, we had candidate c winning that last election let's see if candidate c is going to win it here so let's go a versus uh, b okay so counter save method so a gets those five votes b gets those four votes B gets those three votes, and A gets that vote. So six to seven, B wins that first round. See what happens when B versus C. I'm just doing the conversation method to see if I get the same winner. And in this one, B gets the first five, but C gets those four, B gets those three, and B gets that one. So B. B wins. Well, who did we have win before? Well, we had C1. C1. So does the hair system meet the CWC? It's like, no. The hair system. Fails CWC. Gunder says winning method. Which everyone thinks is so fair. So in addition to the fact that it fails the CWC, we have another problem with it. It also has, a, it all, the hair system also fails to satisfy the monotonicity. Remember, being monotone, you change the vote of a, of a, of a losing candidate, it shouldn't, it shouldn't change the outcome of the election. So if a candidate A wins the election and a new election was held in which the only change is that uh, one ballot or more, candidate A is moved higher and no other change is made, then candidate A should, should still win. That's, that doesn't happen. That's, that's the problem with, with, with monotonicity. All right, let's look at look at a couple examples. We'll do this with uh, 
with four candidates. It gets real interesting when you start putting more candidates here in the system of this hair system. But again, it's just a it's just a process, it's just a procedure. And uh, sorry, I thought I had this set up. All right, let's just get rid of this. It make more sense for me to walk you through it. All right. So this is our our preference schedule, and you you use the same preference schedule for the whole scenario for the whole. Um, so W, we're going to do this real complicated. W, X, Y, Z. You count how many first place votes they each get. So W has got nine first place votes here. And we should probably say we have, we have rounds. So round one. W has got nine. X has got six. Z has got five votes, five first place votes, and Y has six first place votes. Four plus two is six. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to scratch off the lowest, the, the, the candidate with the lowest votes. And that would be candidate C. So he's gone, scratched. And you go through the preference table. And you scratch him off the preference table. And so yeah, you're gonna ask, well, who's gonna get Z's five votes? Well, it's the next candidate in line, and that's candidate X. The candidate X just got five more votes. It just got five more votes because we scratched off candidate Z. So now we go now we go to round two. Round two, well, W has nine votes still. Well, now X is, is leading because they got 11 votes. And then candidate Y has six votes. So again, you go and you scratch off the candidate that has the least votes. And, that, and in this case, it's candidate Y. So candidate Y is gone. And then you go through the preference table and candidate Y goes bye-bye. And now, Candidate Y had six votes, so the four votes will go to the next candidate in line. In this case, it's X in both scenarios. So X gets four more votes plus two more votes. And then we go to the next round. And we add up these totals, and W is nine. And we add up X's totals, and that's 11 plus 4 plus 2 is 17. Now you guys see we have a winner. We have two candidates, and I can declare that X won the election. If you're beating your Y, is it 5? Let's see, I scratched this off, but he got this one. He got that five. I put four. This one, that was Y. Those are Y's votes. That's where the four came from. And then the two came from here. Good question, though. That's, that's, a, that's why I tried to do it in color, but I didn't color code that. The four and the two, or where these came from right here. There's my four, there's my two. It came when we eliminated Y from the first position. And X was the next in line. Even though Z, Z, would, Z would have gotten it. We already scratched Z off. <clears throat> so you scratched them off? So you, uh, they're eliminated. Yeah. So the, the one with the looks, the, the fewest votes. Go away. And we call it first place, even though after we scratch them off, they're in second or third place. 
That's and then their point goes with another individual. Yeah, they and do. How would you figure out who you're trying to get this? Because all the list is mine. I'll do it again. Good question. Let's do it again. Let's do this one more time. I only got one more. I only got one more example. And I'm going to change. I'm going to change the order of, of some of these. Why is this not cooperating? Mm. Okay, eraser, it's tiny. All right, let's do this again. So, so here's my. I'm going to take round one here. Here are my candidates. I have W, X, Y, and Z. Those are my four candidates. Well, W has nine votes right here. So W gets nine votes. X has six votes. Z has five votes right here. Y has four plus two, which is six. So now you look at the candidate that has the least amount of votes. In this scenario, it's, it's, it's Z. Five is the least amount of votes, so they're gone. So then I scratch Z off my preference table. So they're out. And so the next person in line that gets those five votes is going to be X. X is the next preferred candidate. If Z's out, X is going to get those five votes. So now we go to round two. And so round two, we just add up these totals. W still has nine, but now X has 11 and Y has six. Their, their totals haven't changed. So when you cross them out, why don't you just cross them? Oh, okay. so the, the votes so get redistributed. It's on the, on the column. It goes like Z, X, Y. Yep, we, we go by the column. Okay. That's right, that's right. That's a good observation. I, I should have said that. You guys, you guys are, are big help. So now, who's the candidate that's got the least votes? Right. It's Y. So Y is gone. So now I go through my preference table, and Y is out of the race. Well, Y went bye bye. So now Y and N, Y and Z are, are 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 eliminated here. So these four votes are going to go to the next candidate in line, and that happens to be X in this column. And it happens to be X in the next column. So X gets four more votes there, plus these two votes. And so now I can go into the, the round three, and I'm just adding, I'm just adding up the total in round three. And then I can declare a champion. And it's between two candidates, and candidate X has more votes so candidate x is, is is the winner so now could, this would you keep it going like could you say that the w is the least and then eliminate that and then we don't have to eliminate it because we are can declare a winner okay. i mean if i eliminate w I'm, I'm i mean i've already made my decision w x has more has more votes so but this is where this is where the the pair system fails we we're going to change this this is the same preference ballot preference schedule the only thing i'm going to change is the order of my candidates here instead of number two voting for y first and x second he's going to he's going to vote x first and y second that's the only change two voters this is two voters voting differently in a scenario that you know W candidate W was was had more votes. Look what happens here. This is what's crazy. Um, so our round, our round one. Look what happens. We still got W, X, Y, Z, but now our totals have slightly changed. W still has nine. X now has six. Has eight. Because he's got six vote first place votes here and two here. Y has now only four. 
is he, she's lost two of their votes. And Z has five. So now look what happens. So the, the candidate with the least votes is eliminated. And their votes are redistributed. So Y is out of town. Before it was Z that, that was eliminated. Now Y is gone. Well, who gets Z's votes? I'm sorry, Y's votes. Y right there is out. So, Z gets votes. So these four votes go to the next person in line, and that's going to be Z. So Z gets those four votes. So now I go to the next round, and I'm just going to add up these totals. So round two, as W still at nine votes, X still at eight votes, but now Z has nine votes. We've got a tie for first place. So who's got the least votes? Well, X does. Now X is gone. And so you need to go through the preference table, and now X is scratched off. So who where X is. Well, so now who gets those votes? Who gets Z is going to get those votes. Here he's going to get those six. And who's going to get the votes uh, here? Z gets those two more votes there. So now round three. W still, candidate W still has nine votes. Well, look what happened to Z. Z now has 17. We had, uh, just by changing those two votes, you, you think moving X up would help him because X won the last time. Candidate X won the last election. We moved him up to favor him. He, we moved him from second to first place. That should have helped him. It didn't. It didn't help him. So that's just weird. And that's why it fails monotonicity. All right, that's what I got. <laughs>